My name is Numi and you're here for another instalment of the Mega Results unboxings of graded coins from NGC. We're on the next box and uh, this will be a two-part video. Half the box this time and half the box next time and we're still working our way through the through the boxes. So what is going to be inside this box that is going to delight and surprise us? First coin out of the box is a coin from the Isle of Man and this one is a G quarter N so that's a quarter of a noble and this one's a special one which has the Battle of Agincourt uh, privy on it. So uh, I don't know how rare or otherwise the Battle of Agincourt privy is. Um, they come up quite often but there aren't loads and loads of them and a lot of people really like Isle of Man coins. So this is a 2015 Quarter Noble. Ooh, okay. Now here's a serious, serious coin. This is part of the CT collection of coins and it got a Proof 70 and these were only in the large boxes and the premium uh, boxes from the Royal Mint. So the mintage of the two sovereign is not um, massively huge and whenever they go at auction they get really good prices. Here's the one sovereign. This one also comes from the premium box and this one also got a proof 70. Um, you're not seeing quite as many of these coins up for sale. I think the market has become steady. The ones that do come up for sale get really good money and uh, they cost quite a bit to pick up, particularly in Proof 70. And then there's the smallest coin. So all these coins have been given the pedigree CT collection and they are the three coins that came in the Premier box. Uh, as an investment, have these been, been a good investment? They were round about 1400 odd pounds from the mint in 2017 and graded 70 you're looking at something which is around about two two to two and a half thousand um, in terms of value graded. I really really like these gold 50 pence pieces and you'll seen a few videos ago the one that I bought the set that I bought um, this one is the one of two Paddington Bear Gold 50Ps. This is the second in the series, which is Paddington Outside Buckingham Palace. I think this one is slightly nicer than the uh, first one, which was Paddington with the, uh, the 125 train at Paddington Station. Here's another 70. This one's also part of the CT collection. This one is the Falcon of the Plantagenets. Uh, there should be another Queen's Beast along sometime in a, in a month or two, so watch out for the next Queen's Beast. Um, the proofs and the bullions come out at a different time, so uh, always watch for the latest one of those, particularly the quarter ounce ones, get bought up very, very quickly. 2002 half ounce, this one got a 69. Seeing a lot of these, and you'll sort of seeing quite a few of these on the channel, uh, a lot of people are buying these and choosing still the special year sovereigns. I see lots of people with proof sovereigns going through the whole range of years. Uh, no matter whether they're a special year or a regular year, they collect everything. But if you haven't got a sovereign in your collection yet, then these years are probably the, the first ones to try and find. 2002, 2005... 2012 is pretty expensive, um, 2017 is pretty expensive, 89 is also f expensive. So, the, you know, the, of, the, of the special years, probably 2005 is marginally the cheapest, but catching up very, very quickly. And here is a half sovereign also in 70 for 2012. My tip is 2012. Uh, if you look at the mintages, 2012 full sovereigns only have about five and a half thousand coins. They're not that easy to find. And I think 
we will see the 2012 Sovereign at 1989 prices. I think it will be uh, pretty much the, the second most expensive after 1989, and there are already signs of that as well. Another one here, this is a plain rim one, you can see here, there's no grained edge on the side, it's got a plain rim, and they only made 1,817 of these um, with the garter around the outside. If you can find one of them that has, uh, I think it was the sapphire uh, version of that, also with the plain rim, there were only 650 of those. So look for the mintages on these Strike on the Day Sovereigns, and some of them are pretty rare. Somehow, as an investment strategy, I don't think it would be a bad thing just to go around picking up good quality raw uh, 2017s, whether it's the half sovereign or the full sovereign, and just um, collecting those and just picking them up raw when you see them at a good price and having them graded or conserved and graded. Spot the error on this. Spot the error. There is an error on here. It's not that easy to spot, so I'll tell you. It says PF70 Ultra Cameo, and uh, the front of this coin is a matte finish. And normally when they grade them, they don't put the Ultra Cameo there because it doesn't make any sense. Normally they'll just say, like this one as well, 2001. This is not an Ultra Cameo coin. It should just be saying PF70. I guess they've decided the other side of it is Cameo, so maybe they'll put it on. But whenever I've seen these graded in the past, they've always taken off the Ultra Cameo and left it just as a plain PF70 or PF. Um, you can see one side of it is a matte sandblasted finish and the other side is proof in the regular way with mirrored fields and uh, frosting on uh, Her Majesty's face. Ooh, okay. So this is a year 2000 Queen Mother. The Queen Mother, God bless her. The Queen Mother, five pound piece. There's no five pound pieces that are nasty. They're 1.17 ounces of fine gold. They've got a lot of presents. They're bigger than the average one ounce coin, naturally. And a lot of people really, really like picking these coins up. It almost doesn't matter what the design is. There is a big market for five pound pieces. Let's get on to some sovereigns. This one's a 69 with the Arnold Machin uh, portrait, the same as uh, used to be on the stamps. Here's a lion coming up as well. That one's an 82 sovereign. And then we've got the 2017 Queen's Beast Lion. The lion was the first Queen's Beast. Unfortunately, this one got a 69. A lot of them will get 70, but just occasionally. Uh, occasionally, maybe 30% of them, they put through as a 69. Very, very, very slightly might be less than that, but mostly they're 69 or 70. Here's the 89 half sovereign. In 69, it's worth about 350 pounds. Uh, in a 70, it's worth 550 pounds. Ooh, what happened here? A 67. A 67 is bad luck on these coins. It does happen occasionally. There are, and this one was conserved as well. So obviously there was some mark on the coin or a tiny scratch on the coin, something that they just couldn't overlook when they graded it. Another half sovereign from 89. This one's a 69. Normally you'll get a 69. Probably 75% of these coins will be 69s. And then a few will be lower than 69. And a few will be higher than 69. Here's a very thin, very wide coin. MS62. Not a particularly good kind of grade. I don't know why they didn't put proof like on it because it does have a kind of mirrored finish. It probably should have been an MS62 PL or something like that. It's very decorative, very nice. Um, 
not entirely my cup of tea, but I can see the attractions of this uh, Turkish coin. The NGC graders certainly thought they smelt a rat when they graded this one. They only gave it a measly, nasty, mean 64. And it's such a nice coin. OK, it's not perfect. It's had uh, some handling along the years. You know, it's not totally pristine. I think 64 was a little bit mean on this. It's not exactly scratched up, but um, they obviously thought that was a fair grade for it. Here's another one that got a 64. Again, I think they could have been a little bit less mean with this one. Old Archbishop Makarios of Cyprus. Uh, it's a nice coin. 64 is not a great grade. I think, you know, some of these coins, the owner of them expected grades to be a little bit subpar. Probably he bought the coins at a good price. But really, if you are hunting for coins raw to be graded, please just look fairly critically at the fields on them. Make sure there's no scratches. Make sure there's no um, problems with them because grading does cost quite a lot of money and you really need to uh, get good grades if grading is going to really pay. That one was uh, 10 shillings from Rhodesia. Well, look at this. This is one of the tiniest uh, coins. This is the Britannia, one fortieth of an ounce of fine gold. Nice little bit of frosting there, even on a coin so absolutely tiny. Um, it's not a bad thing picking these coins up. The grading relative to the price of the coin can be high, but... Um, they look pretty good when they're graded, and there are a lot of them around, ungraded. People bought them as presents, there's lots around for sale all the time, and there's not very many graded ones for sale. So for people who collect graded Britannias, uh, there is a market for this kind of coin graded, and it sets it out from average as well. So I hope you like that. Part two will be with us uh, pretty soon, maybe in a couple of videos time. Meanwhile, like, subscribe and let me have your comments as always.